Hello, and welcome to Enneagram and Marriage on Spring Break. I hope you're having a great spring break yourself right now. I have my beloved Hannah with me on today's show. She is on spring break, and we thought we would add a little lightness into this week before we come into a heavier topic. On Monday, we're going to be talking about narcissistic personality disorder and how to uh, allow yourself to heal and to stop fawning if you're dealing with a narcissist in your life. And today we thought, you know what? Let's go lighter. Let's have some fun and balance out these heavy topics. And also, if you want deep, we are going deep on Instagram all week, too. We are talking about vulnerability and ways you can deeply love each other. So we try to give you a bit of a balance here. So have some fun with us today as we talk through perhaps the biggest literary hero of all time, in my view, in terms of romance. And that is Jane Austen. She's the masterful. And we have talked about her. We have theories about her as a five. You'll hear our theories about each and every one of her characters in Pride and Prejudice today. If you like this episode, let us know. Leave a review. Hannah also has a bunch of other of her novels and movies typed. And she really likes the cinematic elements. And I really like the reading. And so together, we really like to bring you that full picture, but we're going to start with her biggest and best pride and prejudice, as I said today, so we can really hack out and deep dive Mr. Darcy, Elizabeth, even if you've never seen this or read this, you've seen these elements through and through this enemies to lovers trope. It is good stuff. So we get to talk it through with you today and also figure out what we think each personality type is like as we think about the characters. Now, I will remind you that we also know that sometimes when you are coming into podcasts like this, there's a little bit of a lesson for you sometimes where you might see yourself in a younger years where you're like, yeah, I remember when I was I'm a type three, I'm a type six, I'm a type seven, whatever it is. And I could see that about myself when I was not as healthy or when I was younger. So allow for some of the growth too to come naturally and allow yourself to just enter story with us. I highly recommend you watch the Kira Knightley version as well as the BBC version of this beautiful story as well. And so hopefully you can enjoy, even if you're not on spring break this week, whenever you are, you can come back to these beautiful pieces and then you'll really deep dive with us. So thank you so much. And also, I hope you are still allowing yourself time to walk through your date nights, your self-care, and your social giving. We're trying to do all three of those things with balance and with rest. And I hope you caught Monday's pod on Restful Rhythms also. So without further ado, let's talk with Hannah about Pride and Prejudice. Hey, Hannah, I'm so glad to have you today. Hey, guys, I'm so excited to be on. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, my gosh, this is your spring break. We are so honored junior year of college, spring break. Thank I you. I know. I have been looking forward to this, like, counting down the days for so long. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the season that I'm in, but yeah. anyone else in college understands you need that spring break so bad you need to sleep you need the rest mm -hmm. yeah it's all good yes and we got into this because we were talking all Jane Austen and we said let's do an episode together I because know. Hannah what? is such a fan and we were talking so much well happened to be talking about Emma but right I was doing um some like chores because you know it's time to do a reset on spring break too yeah. and I was like getting to watch Emma in the background and we were like we should do a type on this an episode yeah. um yeah for typing so it worked out yes it did and so we will do that one and even another one with sense and sensibility if you guys end up coming on this journey with us but we want to gauge our audience too so we can always do that at home but today we're going to do the most popular Jane Austen which is Pride and Prejudice. We're so obsessed. You guys don't understand our level of obsession. We reference it constantly. We watch the movie and the show so many times. Mm -hmm. And of course, the book is just classic. Mm -hmm. And you've even gotten some, uh, you know, of your hand lettering and art that you draw with it. So it's been fun to see. I know. I'm so excited to hear what you had for some other types. We've talked it out before, but these are the final ones. So you guys are going to hear the exact ones and maybe even wings too that we have for these people yes and let's even before we do that han let's just i would love to hear why you think jane austen's pride and prejudice might be the best love story of all time 
Mate, <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, man, this is my kid. Okay, no, guys. It's Romeo and Juliet written out in such a more powerful way. Obviously not the same trope, yeah, but it yeah. is um, such artistry. Like, it really mm. is like poetry. Her writing is just uh, so eloquent. And I love it because I think she was one of the first people to really write about personalities in a very deep way and mm -hmm. for relationships too she understood the complexities mm -hmm. um in ways that were not often you know women weren't seen as being um unfortunately as intelligent in that time period or as capable and she pushed the limits and she showed that women could push boundaries and so um i love her writing in this novel i just think it is um it's beautiful. It's so powerful. And I think we're all, you know, just overtaken by like, oh, Mr. Darcy is just everything, especially with the cinematography and things in the um, movies and films. But anyways, this is the best. Yes, I love that. I love that you remind us of the layered uh, work of Jane Austen, that she was extremely detailed and complex. A lot of people think she was a five. And she really earned whatever stripe she gets as far as just being a great writer. We know great writers can come in all types, but we also know that this story sort of supersedes many others because I think it's because we have at the beginning somebody who's doing this whole looks only viewing of this woman. And he's writing her off quickly because of her unfortunate family circumstances and unhealthy family system. And he's also saying, you're not as appealing physically as I would like. And you would think that you're setting up a villain here. Like, I'm just like so mad at him even when I say that. But I know. Somehow he changed. The culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was what it was all about is, you know, um, finding women who would um, be the best wives because they could have the best children or whatever and um, have that ranking going on in society. And so sad thinking about that i'm really glad we didn't have to live through that time mm -hmm. um but it's writers like jane austen who got us through that and mm -hmm. got change to come yes. so yes and this book is so cool because elizabeth bennett i really think is a reflection of her um and mm -hmm. she's probably a mixture of so many characters but mm -hmm. you know she was making changes and speaking her mind yes and i think that her love story here with these two characters if you know elizabeth and darcy and if you don't hopefully you can get a quick backstory hannah can give a super brief one um oh, but okay. <laughs> if, you, like, um, if you don't want to okay but let me just finish this before you do if you do want to um I that i think that one of the reasons i also think it's the greatest love story is that i think that so many of us did not have the first love at first sight but i and they didn't either but there were powerful feelings from the beginning of meeting your mate. Not everyone has that, but I do. I have that trope where there was a very strong distaste for thinking about dating Wes before I dated him, just like they had. And yet it became the most powerful love story of my life. So it's funny how that can happen. And now we look back and laugh, like, why did I have such strong feelings? But it's sometimes these strong feelings are bringing up bigger feelings of love that you might be denying. Absolutely. You guys had a fire, you know, and that's <laughs> your goal. It's like, yeah. it really is a I was like, one. oh my gosh, I don't even want to hear about this guy. He sounds like, oh, like I was just like, I don't want to hear about him. And then my friend is like, never want to be nervous picturing that'd be my person, you know? <laughs> I'm really glad you did. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, yes. Okay. So um, Hannah, tell us a little brief synopsis for those just coming into uh, this book. So the novel is about this family, the Bennett family, and there are sisters. So there's um, Kitty and Lydia are kind of like the silly ones in the story, especially Lydia. And then there's Mary Bennett, who is a sensible, um, like middle child, a little bit looked over. And then Jane is the eldest and seen as the most beautiful um, and good of the sisters. And all the men want her. She's also the oldest. And then we have Elizabeth Bennett, who is our main uh, female lead in this novel. And she is fiery and she has um, so much uh, to share with the world. And as a woman, you know, she wasn't really able to do that. But she's just thinking, I don't really want to abide by society's rules um, in terms of who I marry. I want it to be for love. So she is faced with some different people who come to her and want to be with her. And some of them turn out to be not so good. And then some of them, she's just like, I can't. Um, so you've got to read it. It's amazing or watch it. But Elizabeth Bennett ends up getting with Mr. Darcy, who they start as enemies because Mr. Darcy is very wealthy. She's more like middle to low class um, in their wealth. 
So Mr. Darcy has this royal relation, and um, he is very prideful at the beginning of the novel. Um, but we get to see his character grow, and he has some friends um, who do fall in love with um, his friend falls in love with Jane, the sister. And um, several events happen through the novel that make Elizabeth even more turned away by him. Like she's just like, I cannot be with this guy. He's so prideful and arrogant. As the story goes on, we see um, what Mr. Darcy had been like all along and the depths of his um, heart and love for her. And so in the end of the novel, it's this opposites attract and this beautiful, uh, tragic and just incredible coming together for their glow. Awesome. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That was so well said. <laughs> it was seriously. It was- tangent so hopefully you got the gist of that but yes just definitely give it a watch it's worth it you will love yes. it and I hear you saying give it a watch and a read I will say because yes. she is a visual type and she's read the book I have watched the movies with joy but love the books best yeah so you get both here today yes you do <laughs> and I recommend all yeah and we recommend all versions mm-hmm. <laughs> so um I think we started you on the even the abridged version when you were little so it's like we kind of kept moving up oh, of everything yeah. I mean and Melody's named after um Jane Jane. so you know it's just it's part of our whole life we've always Mm. loved it yes and I've tried to raise them like Jane Austen's uh you know female strong archetype as well to be bold and kind and also uh you know patient waiting for the right person and so I'm really grateful to you and also very passionate so I love to see it all in you and your your sister and also Jack is hopefully uh going to take on some of the better traits of Mr. Darcy not the worst one so yes well let's type together today we have our list of characters I hope our audience is typing with us a little bit and we are so happy to hear if you have other types you want to give because we get it we cannot get inside of these characters fully so we might have some disagreements also stay to the end when we are going to give you a few fun reasons why we are going to defend mrs bennett so i can't wait for that okay but for now hannah why don't you type our heroine elizabeth bennett you've already described her so fiery so beautiful to emulate tell us what you think type she is Okay, I know this is going to get a lot of heat because (laughs) everybody has their own perspective, actually, on all of these characters. You'll find that the Jane Austen fans out there are actually um, very feisty. (laughs) Yes, they are. So, I guess us included. So, anyways, um, Elizabeth, I think, is an eight-wing seven. Um, she is a justice fighter Mm -hmm. she fights for her family she does not like when she sees Mr. Darcy um, being callous and rude to others she doesn't put up with that Mm -hmm. and she's so strong Mm -hmm. you know that's one of Nate's best qualities is that they're um, so determined and she's headstrong you know and she knows who she is Mm -hmm. I would also say wing seven because she has such um, enthusiasm and um, can bring you know, so much spontaneity and things. She loves her walk. She loves her freedom. And so I think in the family, um, again, when the girls are told to be proper, she wants to have fun too. Mm, um, that's but true. Yeah, she's passionate. She wow. will fight though mm. as an eight. She will fight for what's right and for her opinion. <laughs> you nailed that and I when you said we were going to be like fighting about your typing I was like sort of scared um but then you typed her exactly as I would have typed her so okay, now I'm really good, good. But... she's an important one and of course we're going to see different layers and just different tri types so don't panic if you've thought of a different one um but I definitely agree with you and um I even think when you named eight wing seven wow I see how she could have fallen for Mr. Wickham at first we didn't mention him um yet but he's going to be type two but he's sort of one of the villains of the story and she fell for him at first she wasn't always thinking perfectly clearly that spontaneous seven that passionate eight missed some pretty obvious signals that he wasn't a great guy so I think we have to look at this as her character arc that she becomes a healthier eight as we go along so great typing Hannah and of course I love that she was feisty enough to stand up for what was right and for justice and even to defend women oh I love it okay yeah could talk about her all day um I'm gonna give my typing of um, somebody now I'm going to go ahead and type Jane, which we said was the eldest sister and this beauty in the family, this person who is really kind and caring and 
quiet and considerate. And of course, with all of those traits in mind, I'm going to give her the type nine wing one. That's what I had for her. No way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Because she's very detailed and able to go within. And we know nine wing ones often do want love, but they also really are okay to sort of suffer silently and alone sometimes and, you know, kind of go into their creature comforts. And she's good with children and very loving and thoughtful and caring and also reserved with her feelings, except to her one wise person in life, which is Elizabeth. And they're able to confide in each other and say, no one else in our family of our sisters, at least even our mother, none of them are mature enough to even have deep combos with us. So I love their bond too. I love their nine, eight glow together as sisters. I do. I know. Cause Jane helps um, Elizabeth to see reason, you know, yeah. when Elizabeth's like all fired up about something. Mm -hmm. she Jane's calms so her. calm. And she's also just, yeah, a place of, I think she's a safe haven for Elizabeth. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. And one more super important point about Jane that we can all learn with our nineness, whoever is a nine out there, is that she does not, uh, she keeps her cards close to her chest and that almost loses her love because she does not share much about her feelings and so we could also add a five into her tri-type too that, that is important that's uh, good oh my gosh and let's just remember if jane austen herself was a five then she might have made her heroine jane have some five so secondary sort of additional okay now mrs bennett hannah this is the mother of these five headstrong girls and this is an interesting woman what did you type her as I just think, honestly, to the first thing to say is Mrs. Bennett deserves more appreciation. Yes. She is so funny, like the most funny person on screen. Well, her and Mr. Collins. Time, yes. Oh, um, my especially gosh. Especially in the 1990s version, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're <laughs> phenomenal actresses. This is the actors. BBC. Yeah. Um, One Barbie movie. Remember, called us on when we were watching Barbie movie? Yes. Then... <laughs> you'll see it in Barbie movie. <laughs> they were like, so you're good. watching the BBC version of... Pride your and Prejudice, jaw hurts your jaw hurts because you're eating starboard. too much. We were like, oh my gosh, called out. I know it was totally <laughs> us. Um, but Mrs. Bennett is just hilarious. And I think that she's a six wing seven. Mm -hmm. um, she can be neurotic. <laughs> um, and But it's out of so much care. Like she genuinely cares so deeply about her daughters that she's always worrying about their safety and about how they'll be provided for and taken care of someday. And I honestly think a lot of us would probably do the same thing and be freaking out um, mm -hmm. if we were in those circumstances where mm -hmm. women did not have any power to take care of themselves yeah. um, and get jobs and things. So she was um, really thinking as a six, such a thinking type. And yes. She's always like, my poor nerves and things, yes. you know, and it's her headaches, um, her nerves, and her husband loyal. says, these nerves have been my companion for these last yes. 20 years, yes. et cetera, you know? And I think she has that seven, because I'm guessing when she was young, oh, she resembled gosh. something of a Lydia and was um, mm -hmm. really oh, fun. Gosh. She um nailed it and yeah just enthusiastic yes you nailed it oh my gosh that six stays very close to the culture of what's happening what's going now her wing seven got her in some trouble <laughs> <laughs> for sure all right well let me go ahead and i'm gonna type lydia bennett and we've been alluding to a lot of seven wings so let's just go ahead and name a seven lydia bennett <laughs> lydia is trouble from the start <laughs> she also has some three and some eight she's kind of that triple threat right Right there of like yeah. all the big energy but she's really compulsive and running after her whims and of course we have to remember the trope of adolescence like not the healthiest version of any of these types but she really is somebody who doesn't think fully through she has some ideas at the beginning very self-focused uh just very concerned about having fun and not a worry about tomorrow uh she also has that three that's a braggart sort of like i'm better than you sisters and so that's something that i think is the sexual uh energy the kill or be killed instinct of like you know I don't care for their face. They're ugly, you know, big energy, making hats with extra fancy accompaniments. Um, so I see a lot of sexual energy and a lot of assertiveness. What about you? I completely agreed. I had the same typing, uh, seven wing eight. Oh my gosh. I think, yeah. Um, exactly. As you said, you said it so well, she's very young too. And I think that makes a difference, but I think the thing is she loves being young. Mm -hmm. She loves, um, getting to say I'm the old, I'm the youngest and married before the older ones. Yes. And, um, 
you know, she also has that wing eight because her energy, she has so much passion mm -hmm. for life and yeah. the leader. She yeah. leads um, her sister, Kitty, into doing um, like mischievous and playful things mm -hmm. and stuff. And mm -hmm. I think you just gave it perfectly. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad for us to also give her the grace of being young and having to learn really hard lessons in life because of some of those young decisions. I mean, if I feel any bad for anybody long term, and it, it's her because she ends up with the worst marriage to a, a nasty character. And that's funny that I'm going to be talking about him next. But first, let's come <laughs> back to something positive. Mr. Darcy Hannah. Okay, here is, yeah, this is another one <laughs> that I know people type. could be very opinionated yes. about. Yes. I am so open to hearing other opinions. Mm -hmm. So please don't think, I mean, honestly, this was a really tough one, but mm -hmm. um, I think Mr. Darcy is a five wing four. Mm -hmm. I almost said wing six, mm -hmm. but I'll give some reasons why four. Mm -hmm. um, if you know anything about Pride and Prejudice, I'm guessing you've gotten the feeling that yeah he has some five-ish <laughs> qualities um he mm -hmm. is not only logical and a thinker but he is um introverted he mm -hmm. is I think you know in those days um it was more about what is proper and what is modest and things for the society yeah. um, and classy and so being wealthy he had to always uphold those things but at the same time I think it's just his character that he didn't want to dance at parties unless there was someone he really wanted to be with which that can be how fives are mm -hmm. but um he also knows how to handle money as a lot of fives do mm -hmm. um That's and he's yeah he knows how to handle that <laughs> money he has and um and at the end of the day you know fives are so uh, romantic too when they go to that four if you watch the newer version I think it's 2005 mm -hmm. um that movie he is so romantic mm -hmm. head over heels for Lizzie yeah. and um and yet reserved with his five so what do you think I think you nailed it this is so funny because we've seen I think we're so through and through alike on <laughs> <laughs> we I might hit we some have. differences later, but you really got it. And you said that about his money and the way he's unhappy when his uh, relatives, well, a steward of the family, Wickham, who we keep uh, saying is the villain, and you probably know this if you're here with us, but he doesn't like the way he isn't good with money. He doesn't like the way he isn't proper. And yet he doesn't uh, write him a nasty review all over the world. Um, he's not such a three truth teller that he's like, I have to tell everyone. He's like, let's keep this within. It'll cost us too much as a family to slander him. But let's also keep our cards even closer to our chest because we know that there's unsafe people out there because we have money. So let's keep our affairs private. Also, he looked at um, her family, his uh, betrothed to be Elizabeth Bennett, and he sees her wild mother, as I mentioned in the beginning. And he's like, this is too much energy for me. So I really see the five. Um, and yet he also was able to learn and grow and be actually, if we were to give him Trudy seven love styles test, he would probably come out to be intellectual because she starts to banter with him and has such a fire with him that he's like, I needed to give you that second look. And I think that that was really fun for all of us to see. So I think fives will do that, that they don't usually pick a spouse based on just looks. I think they sometimes think they do because they like a lot of fives love their hot rods and being cool and, you know, the tough person in the background with the leather jacket. Uh, yes, there's a couple of tropes for fives, but like five wing six is more like the techie for sure. Like, I don't care about that. But sometimes that artful five wing four is like, I really want to be tough and artistic and also, yes. you know, that wild guy. And I think we see that he has a bit of that flair because he's like, I am managing this whole home and estate and I want somebody who's able to be wild with me. So I see that side of the five in him. Absolutely. And I think too, with the four, he ranks like mm -hmm. he doesn't just under or understand the underlying social classes he straight out tells her when he's proposing he's the like, first time yeah. you are so far below me yeah but i'll stoop down to your level you know because you're good enough yeah. and so she does not put up with that yeah but that's what he's like at the beginning mm -hmm. and so i think he ranks as a four and he's also jealous of her affections with wickham and everything mm -hmm. um so not only is he romantic but he has that mm -hmm. and then i think he just likes being mysterious which five wing fours are he mm -hmm. enjoys having people wonder mm -hmm. and being slightly concealed mm -hmm. so writes the letter to her <laughs> yes he has i think this is how um kira knightley said it is that uh 
he is gently masculine, I think is what she said. And I thought that was so well put. Um, mm-hmm. She plays Elizabeth Bennett in one of the movies. Mm-hmm. And she mentioned that the actor was even like that. And so I Aww. think that um, when Mr. Um, Darcy is looked at as one of the ideals for women, you mm-hmm. know, finding a partner, it's it's true, but not because, you know, of his romantic words but just because we see the goodness in his character mm. at the end of the day yeah he loves his sister and yeah. things and it's really sweet yeah he's not like i have to find my worth through the world i already know who i am i know my my rhythms i don't want to invite you in if you're going to be completely chaotic but then he realized somebody who is that enchanting can give me energy that i don't have even though i love my rhythms He's like, I could really use this extra spice. And that's why I love their 5'8". Oh my gosh, so cute. I know, it's so good. Such a great glow. Okay, so we did a nice long time on him because he deserves that. He's the main male protagonist and based <laughs> off of like every guy ever since. So, um, all right. So all of you need to know now, sadly, about Wickham. Um, <laughs> so we'll go very fast on him. I think he's got some very unhealthy seven wing eight or three vibes. Um, he's just not truthful. He's looking for fun like Lydia and stimulation in that seven place if that's how he's going to self-soothe but I also think the three is there in the sense of I want the standing and I want this social proof and that's where he's looking around for who's the richest woman in town and when he finds out it's not the Bennett family of course he's not as interested in Elizabeth um, but he is interested in manipulating and so there's even some three wing two. Oh my gosh the manipulations really it's just a lot going he's, on with him unhealthy he's He's tough, right? Whatever he is, he's not in his health. Mm-hmm. And that's also important for people yes, to understand. Like, is, if you yeah. share the pipe, I, I have given myself um, mm-hmm. some of the bad characters before as like, oh, yep, they're a 4-2. Like, mm-hmm. I could go there in my unhealth. Yes. Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, um, I think that was really good what you said, though, that he could be a 7. And I, I think I agree with you more than a 3. Mm-hmm. He's competitive and just wants to climb to the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so not a 3 at their best. Okay, one of our favorite characters, which was uh, actually based off of one of Jane Austen's nieces, Charlotte Lucas. I love Charlotte. You do. Tell us about she Charlotte. She's one of my favorite characters. And I think she's so understated, and I actually love that about her. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. I think that she is a five wing six. I think she's a five. Oh my gosh, I never did the wing yeah. six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Five wing six Nailed it. so loyal. Mm-hmm. Um and she says, I'm not romantic. She is not a five wing four. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure she goes to that in different ways too mm-hmm. with her. I don't know, gardening or whatever, but I think Mm -hmm. that she's so wise and um, a place where Lizzie goes to get advice and things. And Mm -hmm. she, by being an observer, gets to give new perspectives. And I love Charlotte. She's awesome. Yes. Oh my gosh. The fact that she's so like, I am a practical person who doesn't have to have everything. I really like that for the wing six. She wants safety, stability, Um, And she's loyal. Oh, my goodness. But also with that five being the main type, she's introverted and understands I have to be practical and um, careful for my family's budget. So very caring. Um, Now, I'm going to do Miss Mary Bennett because she's sort of an overlooked Bennett sister. And as Hannah said, she's very academic. One might think she's a five. But I'm going to give her the type of one because I think that she's always sort of in her unhealth, at least, um, giving a a sermon or uh, judging everybody to be oh you're not being feminine this isn't the right thing to do and so she's scolding others and it's awkward anyway because she's not the oldest and so people are like Mary what are you doing and you know Mary thinks it's the right thing to play a dirge on the piano and she's just kind of like in her rightness she's losing relationship so I think that she's an unhealthy one I never thought of that I did not even consider it I mean guys I stereotyped her as a five right away I was like five with four you know that fits no the one is so true I completely agree yeah and she's self-pres I mean so she's not necessarily out there in this loud nasty wild anger way but she's definitely got some of that social one also so it's it's probably like a person with several of the instincts going yeah and maybe even a bit of the sexual instinct but not likely to get much action with that with yes. that behavior so obviously I, i've named some really unhealthy sevens in this and this is just an unhealthy one okay <laughs> so we have here now a character for you caroline bingley oh this is okay. the sister of uh jane uh not jane austen jane um jane bennett's love interest and so she's 
Um, she's a saucy girl, right? She is. She is a tough one to type. I think also because she's a side character, but at the end of the day, I would say she's a three mm -hmm. um, through being two. I think she's a heart type. Mm -hmm. She obviously likes Mr. Darcy. Um, mm -hmm. And she is, you know, very ranking. Um, but I think that also she can be um, deceitful in terms of when she pulled her brother away, she was lying to him like, oh, Jane doesn't have any feelings for you. We can go away and um, ended up, you know, costing him love for a little while. Mm -hmm. But I think that was also the practicality of the three. She's just like, oh, no, she's not in our league. So I think Caroline Bingley is... Um, you know, a little bit, she's, she gets hated on and she, she can be really mean and annoying, but I think also she's probably very traditional for the times, you know, that was yeah. expected. Yes. Oh my gosh. You're so right. And we'll just do a really quick of the last few. So we have, mm -hmm. um, Lady Catherine de Burr, who I'm just going to say, I think straight up eight through yeah. and through. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yep. She's a Royal. She knows it. She knows what she wants. Uh, so you kind of get the best and the worst. She's of the so eight. blunt. It's blunt, just like she and Elizabeth, the other eight, obviously go toe to toe at some point. It's so interesting. This is why it's such a great story. Um, and then we have Mr. Bingley, who is Jane's, you know, who we mentioned is this nine wing one, sweet, demure, um, sort of concealing her love. What did you think Mr. Bingley is? Seven wing six. Oh, yes. I see that. It brings so everything much. to positivity. Yeah. He is loyal to his yeah. friends, even though yeah. he's like, Darcy, why aren't you dancing? He yeah. always uh, lights up a room, um, which you do too. And so I think funny. he's also got a little bit of, I'm sure, a little underlying anxiety. He's yeah. always like kind of scattered, a little bit yeah. of a thinker. Um got a little neurodivergent at one point. Yeah, 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 I know, I did. Um, And I think that's also in the newer film of that. Yeah. But I love Mr. Bingley. He's yeah. just, everyone likes him. Who doesn't so like precious. him? He's so precious and he lets Mr. Darcy, um, <laughs> like the, the people with the big energy, like, or strong opinions, like fives have a lot of strong opinion, by the way. Um, But oh, yeah. um, five, eight energy that Mr. Darcy brings, he kind of like cowers to that a little bit sometimes until he finds himself and says, I am going to finally look at my feelings. What do I really feel? And that takes a long time for a seven. So not at all surprised that he almost missed his love because he took so long. Yeah. All right. So now let's have you type uh, the last one before we talk about our funny ending with Mrs. Bennett. <laughs> um, this is a really funny character, Mr. Collins. This is a person oh. who is basically a friar, a uh, clergyman who has inherited Inherited a small estate and thinks he's the man and he is like everything wrong with purity culture <laughs> all represented he is we actually have my mom's paper remember she wrote a paper on him and how ridiculous he was from many years ago in her college yes all right <laughs> this is so hard and honestly i'm i i bet there's a lot of other great opinions out there so i'd be very curious to hear them my take which i hate to do this to myself <laughs> is four <laughs> here is why i, I don't think him. he's very artistic i really don't but i think at the <laughs> he is ranking like he really is and i think he's a little bit prideful too and i can go to that in unhealth but he's like once he's married to charlotte he's like um lizzie come see my house like do you see what i've done it's so <laughs> great and stuff and i could see that as three also i bet he's four wing three or something but I just saw four because I think he really does feel a lot. Um, clearly, he's very passionate for um, Lizzie. And so, yeah, I could argue three also. Sexual um, four, maybe, strongly, too. But yes, yes, absolutely. Projecting when not and healthy, he's projecting the always shame always a victim, like. too. And he fawns over Lady Catherine. And he loves, actually, the ranking, though. He's like, oh, she's above me, you know? Yeah. And he loves the honor of being her, like, sort of little manservant, you know? And so it's just funny. He's hilarious, but yeah. I hate to give him to my type, but I will because honestly, we all got, you know, every type has, you know, stuff. has stuff. So, yes. And as a four, you model that for us sometimes yes. of being able to self abnegate. So, <laughs> thank you for trying to be so humble. Yeah. And I'm going to, I want to throw other types under the bus with him, but I never gave it any thought. It's so hard for me to be mean at all as a seven. Like, I just feel like he's so bad and you gave him to yourself. So, you are so <laughs> much better than him. But I, one of my favorite parts, if you're watching YouTube, you can see this, but basically, he does this little wave for those of you <laughs> podcasting and just watch 
watch the old 1990s show yeah, there's a BBC. clip of him with charlotte so funny he does this little <laughs> wave and it's like you're an idiot but he's you know he's sweet and he's just yeah. like <laughs> yeah it's so funny he's yeah, hilarious he is and he's like she how i can't believe lady Catherine would condescend i know he would talk to me and so he's doing the self admiration too so okay i'm gonna throw him some love in that way that he has a lot of humility underneath that puffed up pride and so there's some good to him too yeah. um but we can giggle about him but let's now say we are redeeming mrs bennett i had written a blog on this in the past <laughs> and then come to find out a ton of other people had too she's usually seen as the most annoying person and the whole trope and she's sort of the fall of Lydia the the wild sister and you know here we're blaming everything on this precious six wing seven and I'd like to redeem her yes (laughs) I would too please do you want to start okay sure I think one thing that I like about her is that she cares very deeply about her daughters and she worries about them and spends energy and as you know sixes are like that like they will put out a lot of energy they're one of our activity types and a lot of us are like holding our cards close like I said and we're like I can't do that that's too much passion and she brings all the passion to the table because she loves her daughters so much now is it sometimes misplaced yes is it sometimes neurotic yes but she cares and that's never in question that's one thing what about you she's so loyal to her people yeah I think she's just such a thinker like Mm -hmm. yes she's such a romantic heart type too and very reacting with her body um so i think that's her wing eight um or not wing eight she's not a seven but i think she definitely has that probably in her tri type um you know she's like oh my smelling salts up like she needs her rest and she's i think always trying to seek peace i think that's what she wants is I'm trying to uh, have this feeling of peace because my husband's going to die, you know, in a couple of years. And because they're older and she's like, we got to get these girls married off. Like, let's go, go, go. And yes, so, that's so um, she's but running see that to as people. Me as a seven too, yeah. Yes, she's clinging to people and forming quick relationships that aren't always wise, like Mr. Wickham. But she's just like, hey, you've got money to take, you know, like she's like um, meeting everyone at the ball and becoming sociable. Mm-hmm. ensuring the girls always are on their best behavior and looking their best because yes. it's she's thought it all through she's like i oh planned it all gosh. out i got it all figured yes. out this is how we're gonna survive yes oh my gosh and this is the way to survive for women in this culture where Wes sent us a message this week to say women only got their credit card rights in the 1970s this is early 1800s and so i think it's so beautiful that she's trying to bring out the best in her daughters knowing this is their best possible choice would be to marry well so she's uh doing that which honestly Honestly, here's where I don't think I'd be as good with my seven, four, nine. I feel like I'd have a much harder time and I'd be one of the quieter players out there and she's getting it done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's getting she these is. girls married off I to the best that, guys. Yeah, I know. And I think she wow. grows too. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, yeah, she's she as silly as ever. Yeah. Know, by the end of the book. Yeah. And that's Very entertaining too, to her husband. Exactly. He's like, I'm good friends with your nerves. I know them well, which says a lot. Like, <laughs> she's probably been like this since the beginning. Yeah. But she's charming too. Probably yes. was to him. And yeah. Um, she loves having fun. She's like, girls, go to this party, Lydia, you know. So yeah. she's the sweetest um, also oh, and hilarious. Oh, my so. gosh. Well, you and I had so much fun today, and I am so hoping our guests here did too, that you just had a cup of coffee with us, that you just relaxed with us. Whatever kind of spring break motif you're in, make sure you watch that BBC version and also the Kira Knightley version. Yes, please. They're so good. They're Any so of you soundtrack good. lovers out oh, there, gosh. the Kira Knightley version is incredible. Oh, oh my Oh my gosh, her and Melody play on the piano. So, oh my gosh. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for spending time. Thank you, Hannah, for spending some of your spring break with us. Of course. It was such a joy. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Bye. Thank you guys so much for taking part in this episode with us. Make sure you head over to enneagramandmarriage.com if you just want to read more of our blogs, learn more about different areas of your relationship. And we have over... 400 podcasts, including our subscriber episode. So make sure you hop over to today's subscriber episode. We are finishing up the Myers-Briggs and we're headed into a hot topic next Wednesday. So make sure you stay tuned for that as well as we delve into the sexual instinct a little more deeply. But Monday, narcissism first. We have to work through how to make sure we're in healthy relationships. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.